Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to determine what we get when we plug in a negative x for each of the hyperbolic functions. So let's find out, just like we do in trigonometric functions, what is the result when we do that. So what we're going to do here is replace x to, with a minus x in the equivalent equation. So this is e to the minus x plus e to the minus minus x like that divided by 2. So when we do that we get the following result. This is equal to e to the minus x and the minus is here cancel out so that's plus e to the plus x divided by 2 and then when we switch the order we get e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2 which is the exact equivalent to the hyperbolic cosine of x. So in other words the hyperbolic, the hyperbolic cosine of a negative x is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of a positive x. And that's because it's an even function. Now, let's go ahead and do that with the hyperbolic sine of x. So this becomes e to the minus x minus e to the minus of a minus x divided by 2. So this becomes equal to e to the minus x minus e to the, the minuses cancel out, so that's e, e to the plus x divided by 2, and now when we switch them around, this becomes equal to minus e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2, and then if we factor out a negative 1, let's see what we get. So this becomes a negative 1 times e to the, oh that would be e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2 and of course this is exactly equal to the hyperbolic sine of h or of x so this becomes minus the hyperbolic sine of x and so the hyperbolic sine of a negative x is equal to the negative of the hyperbolic sine of x exactly the same as it is with trigonometric functions now for the hyperbolic tangent of minus x since we know that the hyperbolic tangent is equal to the hyperbolic sine of a minus x divided by the hyperbolic cosine of a minus x, and we know that this is equal to the negative of the hyperbolic sine of x, and this is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of x, so this becomes the negative of the sine of the cosine or the negative of the hyperbolic tangent of x. So you can see since the the hyperbolic tangent is an odd function, so when we replace the minus x, when we plug, plug in a minus x, that's the same as the negative when we plug in an x. The cotangent should be exactly the same because that's the inverse of the tangent. So here we have, this is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of a negative x divided by the hyperbolic sine of a negative x, which is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of a positive x divided by the negative of the hyperbolic sine of x, so this becomes the negative of the hyperbolic cotangent of x, just as what we expected since the hyperbolic cotangent is the inverse of the hyperbolic tangent. On the secant, we know that this is equal to 1 over the cosine or the hyperbolic cosine of negative x, and of course that can be replaced by simply the hyperbolic cosine of x, which means that this is equal to the secant or the hyperbolic secant of x. And so the hyperbolic secant of a negative x is equal to the hyperbolic secant of x, and since the hyperbolic cosecant is 1 over the sine, the hyperbolic sine, so this becomes 1 over the hyperbolic sine of negative x, which is equal to the negative 1 over the hyperbolic sine of x, because this hyperbolic sine of the negative x is equal to the negative hyperbolic sine of x, so this becomes equal to the negative cos hyperbolic cosecant of x. And so those are, those are the six hyperbolic identities. When we plug in a negative x, notice whenever we have the hyperbolic cosine or the hyperbolic secant, it goes to the positive and everything else we put a negative one in front of it, and that's how it's done.